Hey everybody, this is Mr. Locke. This is the logic test review video. Let's look at the first three questions. It says, underline the hypothesis and circle the conclusion of each conditional statement. So, one of the key words that tells us if something is the hypothesis, it'll say the word if. In the conclusion, sometimes that'll say the word then. Sometimes it'll say then. But notice there's the word if right here. So it says if, that part must be the hypothesis, then that must be the conclusion. So if a person is at least 18 years old, hypothesis, then the person can vote. Conclusion. So the person has to be at least 18 years old to be able to vote. Number two, a figure is a figure that has five let's see, there's something wrong with number two. A figure is has five sides if it is a pentagon. Let's take out that word is. I think there's a problem there. A figure has five sides if it is a pentagon. So Notice the word if is right here. It's in the second part of the sentence, so that must be the hypothesis. And a figure has five sides would be the conclusion. In number three, angles are congruent. If the angles are vertical angles, well, the last part, if the angles are vertical angles, must be the hypothesis, and angles are congruent, must be the conclusion. On to number four, write the following given the conditional statement. If an angle is acute, then the angle measures less than 90 degrees. So what we need to do to write the inverse, the converse rather, we need to switch the hypothesis and the conclusion. So we're gonna switch the order. Converse means we need to switch the first part and the last part of the sentence. So, we are going to write if an angle measures less than 90 degrees, then it is acute. Okay, for the inverse, keep in mind for the inverse, we need to write the word not, or we need to unknot it. What we call that in mathematics, we call it negation. So we're going to say, if an angle, now instead of saying it's acute, we're going to say is not acute, then the angle, now instead of saying measures, we're going to say does not measure less than 90 degrees. Now, for the contrapositive, it's kind of a combination of the converse and inverse. What we're going to do, we're going to change the order of the hypothesis and the conclusion. And we're, we're going to negate the hypothesis and the conclusion. So instead of saying, if an angle is acute, I'm going to say, if an angle does not measure less than 90, then it is not acute. That would be the contrapositive. Now for the biconditional, we're going to say if and only if. So I'm going to write an angle is acute if and only if it measures less than 90 degrees. Let's go down to number five. It says, given the following conditional statement, if two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent, which of the following statements is the inverse? Now remember, to write the inverse, we need to negate the hypothesis and conclusion. So what that means, we're going to add the word not right here. 
And we're going to add the word not right here. So let's check out which one says that. Is it choice A? If two angles are congruent, then they are vertical angles. No, because that's the converse. A is the converse, but we're looking for the inverse. Part B says, if two angles are not vertical angles, then they are not congruent. Hey, that's got to be it. It's B. What about C? If two angles are not congruent, then they are not vertical angles. Well, that would be the contrapositive. And what about D? If two angles are not vertical angles, then they are congruent. That's something else. They negated the hypothesis of the condition, conditional statement, but they left the conclusion the same. So I'm actually not sure what that last one would be called. Let's go on to number six. Number six, given the following conditional statement, if lines are perpendicular, then the lines intersect at a right angle. Which of the following statements is the biconditional? Let's look at A. If line, and again, for biconditional, what that means, we need to look for the word if, and, only, if. It takes, it only occurs, so, Let's look at the choices. A, if lines intersect at a right angle, then the lines are perpendicular. No, that's the converse. B says, if lines are not perpendicular, then the lines do not intersect at a right angle. No, that's the inverse. What about C? Lines are perpendicular if and only if the lines intersect at a right angle. That is the answer. That is the biconditional of the conditional statement. And finally, D, if lines intersect at a right angle, then the lines are not perpendicular. Well, that's not right either, because it does not say if and only if. Let's go to number seven. Number seven says, the new statement is which of the following? So here's our original statement. If an angle is bisected, then the angle now has two equal parts. Now let's look at the new statement. How did it change? If an angle does not have two equal parts, then the angle is not bisected. So notice they put the word not here, and they also switch the order of the original conditional statement. That means it must be the contrapositive. That's choice C. Let's take a look at a logic puzzle. Now for a logic puzzle, it says, four kids went to a very unusual pet store. Each child picked out a different animal to take home. Can you match the child with his or her new friend? Oh, how sweet. Let's look at it. Clue number one. No child has a pet that starts with the same letter as his or her name. So let's look at Dan. Well, Dan's name starts with a D. Well, I noticed that dragon starts with a D, so he does not have a dragon. What about Sarah? Sarah's name starts with an S, so does Sea Serpent. She does not have a Sea Serpent. Melody's name starts with an M. She does not have a manatee. And Yuli, I suppose that's how you say it, or starts with a U, so she does not he or she does not have a unicorn. So we've looked at clue number one. Clue number two. Dan doesn't have a pet that lives in the water. So let's say that these two pets, the sea serpent and the manatee, let's say that those are water pets. They live in the water. So Dan does not have... All right, so Dan does not have a sea serpent or a manatee. Okay, clue number three. Melody is allergic to smoke. So that must mean, well, dragon, let's say that's our smoke 
our animal. I can only one I can think of that would make smoke. You know, dragons supposedly can breathe fire. So Melody is allergic to smoke, so she must not have a dragon. That takes a bit of an inference. Number four, Sarah loves to fly. So which is the only one that can fly? We must think it must be a dragon. That's kind of an interesting logic puzzle. So to understand that, we kind of need to know something about these different animals. So Sarah loves to fly, so she must have the dragon. Now let's say they all have different animals, as it says up here, because it says different animal, no one else is going to have a dragon. So let's mark out the dragon for everyone else. So what does Dan have to have? Dan must have a unicorn. What is, and let's say no one else could have a unicorn. So that means Sarah must have a manatee. And finally, we must have made a mistake. Let's check, guys. Let's back up real quick. I noticed I made an error, guys. Let me back up real quick and take out that check. So let's back up real quick. Notice it said Sarah loves to fly. She must have the dragon. That part is correct. So that means that Melody must have the sea serpent. So let me just start this problem again, guys. Let's back up and do it again. I got interrupted by a student. We needed something from our room. I apologize, guys. Let's go to number one. No child has a pet that starts with the same letter as his or her name. So that means mean Dan does not have a dragon. Sarah does not have a sea serpent. Melody does not have a manatee. Yuli does not have a unicorn. Okay. Number two, Dan doesn't have a pet that lives in water. Again, let's say that these two pets, sea serpent and manatee, they live in water. Okay. So Dan doesn't have either of those two pets. Let's go to number three. Melody is allergic to smoke. Let's see that our dragon is our smoke producing pet because supposedly they can breathe fire according to mythology. So Sarah I'm sorry, Melody is allergic to smoke, so she must not have a dragon. Okay. Finally, number four, Sarah loves to fly. So that means Sarah must have the dragon, because supposedly they can fly. So let's say Sarah can fly. Let's just note that we dragons are our only animal that can fly. And because it says each child picks out a different animal, that means no one else can have a dragon. So if Sarah has the dragon, what does Dan have? Well, Dan must have the unicorn. And let's say no one else could have that. And Sarah must have, well, we already determined she has a manatee. She can't have any other animal. So Melody must have the sea serpent. And finally, Yulai must have the manatee. So finally, our answer. Dan has the unicorn. Sarah has the dragon. Melody has the sea serpent. And Yulai has the manatee. That should be correct. Now let's see if I missed any problems on that page real quick. Now we got them all. Let's look at the proofs. Now the proofs, what we always start with, we start by writing our given information. It says 5x plus 10 is equal to 3 times 3x minus 2. All right, let's continue. So that is the given. We always begin with the given information. We just copied and pasted this statement right here into statement number one. Okay, the next statement, what we need to do, I notice there's parentheses, I need to distribute by multiplying the three times each part or term inside the parentheses. So I'm going to write 5x plus 10 equals, well, 3 times 3x 
3 multiplied by 3x, that's 9x. 3 multiplied by negative 2, that must be negative 6. In order to accomplish that, I use the distributive property. I'm going to shorten and write distributive prop. On to number three. Number three, let's subtract 5x from 9x. Well, what is 9x minus 5x? Well, that's 4x minus 6. So we're going to say we use the subtraction property of equality. Okay, on to the next step. We're going to say that we added 6. So 10 plus 6, that's 16. So we're going to say 16 equals 4x. Now to do that, I use the addition property of equality. I'm going to write POE as an abbreviation for property of equality. On to step number 5. Well, I'm going to divide... 16 divided by 4 is 4, so I'm going to say 4 equals x, and I use the division property of equality. And finally, I can say that x equals 4 using the symmetric property. Now, on the test, I'm going to provide you with a list of the properties. You just have to know what they mean. All right, let's go on to number 10. Number 10 says, given this information, prove x equals 10. So, let's, let's just go back and look at our last one real quick. Notice it said prove x equals 4, and that's what we did, x equals 4. We proved it. All right, number 10. So, our given information, we're going to write that in again. 7 parentheses, x plus 4 equals 10x minus 2. Okay. So I've done that. Then I notice they distributed. 7 times x is 7x. 7, 7 times 4 is 28. They used the distributive property. Property. Okay. On to number 3. They, they use the subtraction property of equality. Well, to do that, they could actually have done a couple of things. But I noticed step number four. It says they got 30 equals 3x. So they must have subtracted 10x minus 7x. So if I do that, I get 28 equals 3x minus 2. Then they added the 2, 28 plus 2 is 30, so that would be using the addition property of equality. And finally, step number 5, if I divide 30 by 3, I'm going to get 10 is equal to x, and then they switch it around, x equals 10, that's the symmetric property. Okay, on to step number 11, I notice it says write a conditional statement using math vocabulary, shapes, angles, anything we've learned. Now keep in mind a conditional statement. It needs to have the word if and then in it for the type we've been learning. So, let's come up with something. If I study conditional statements, then I will understand a part of logic. If I study conditional statements, then I will understand a part of logic. That's an example, or I could say, if... I write a proof 
then I need to write the given first. Or I could say if an angle is obtuse, then it measures greater than 90 degrees. Here's a few examples of conditional statements using math vocabulary. Let's go to the back page real quick, guys. Now, if I have a cat, then I have a feline. Let's write a few conditional statements again. It would be, if I have a feline, then I have a cat. For the inverse, it would be, if I do not have a cat, then I do not have a feline. Notice this is in the same order as the original conditional statement up here. For the contrapositive, I would write, if I do not have a feline, then I do not have a cat. And finally, the biconditional, I have a cat if and only if I have a feline. On to number three. The converse would be, if I have a fish, then I have a goldfish. The inverse would be, if I do not have a goldfish, then I do not have a fish. The contrapositive would be, if I do not have a fish, then I do not have a goldfish. And finally, the biconditional would be, I have a goldfish, if and only if I have a fish. Hey, well, thanks for watching. That's the review. We're going to take our test on Thursday, November 2nd, 2017. Thanks for watching. Any questions, feel free to come to tutoring. I'll be here before school at 8 a.m. Available every day except Wednesday and Thursday. And I'll be available after school every day except Wednesday at beginning at 4.15 p.m. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.